This is the Forex Q&A podcast. This is VP, professional Forex prop trader here in the United States, answering your user-submitted Forex trading-related questions every Monday morning. Now, if you have a Forex trading question on your mind and you've never asked one before and you've already seen all of the material, so you don't waste your question, because most people do, what you do is you go to nononsenseforex.com slash askvp, fill out the form, and I will typically get back to you within 48 hours. Now, we're going to get into the questions sooner than later this week, um, but I have one ask for you all. Depending on how you found this podcast, this channel, the blog, however you first found me. Now, now I know I've asked this question before, but this is a little more specific. What I want to know is who found me through a search engine? Now, YouTube is technically a search engine. I don't mean that. But Google, Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, Yandex, any of those particular search engines. Let me know if you remember which of those search engines it was, what you were searching for, and what it brought you to. Now, I can already look a lot of this stuff up on my end, but I don't know how much of it actually sticks. And all the data Google gives you really doesn't tell you everything. So if you could, and I know there's a lot of room for people to come in and try to be funny here, please just do your best to answer this question if it applies to you. So again, if you found this material through a classic search engine, and only if you did, leave a comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not, just go ahead and go to YouTube because all the podcasts do broadcast there as well if you didn't already know. And if you recall all of that information, please let me know. It does go a long way, believe it or not. It is the Forex Q&A podcast, and our site is nononsenseforex.com, home of pretty much everything you'll ever need. Links to every podcast, all the videos, the blogs. And episode 45's question is from a lot of people. Um, I went ahead and took the very last time I got asked this question and put that question on the blog, but I did not mention who said it. And you guys typically know what happens when I don't mention the person. Now, look, if you go to Ask VP, you sign up for whatever my answer is, and you might be publicly ridiculed on the podcast. But that almost never happens. But I feel like this question is a question I typically get from beginners, um, people probably in the first six months of actual trading. Maybe that's not the case, but it seems like it is. Uh, but episode 45's question is, how can we use currency correlations to trade Forex? Now, this is one of those questions that over time I've gotten so many times that you start to wonder if you're missing something. You know, if I just been ignoring this for so long that there's this new idea out there of what we can do with these correlations. Now, what I mean by correlations, not how they correlate to commodities. We've already done a, a podcast on that. I think it was episode 19, 18 or 19, about the connection between certain currencies and things like metal and oil and all that. This is all about how different currencies correlate with each other. So short answer, long answer, I guess. Short answer is you really can't. But again, I was getting the question so often that I had to do a little bit of research because I, I thought to myself, okay, am I just missing something here? Is there something that I just completely skipped over? Because there's so much information out there. Even somebody with my experience is going to miss some of it. Now, there's so much information out there. Some of it is going to slip through the cracks. So I went and did a bit of research, started with YouTube, ended up with just actual websites. And I regret 98% of it. I talked about this on the blog. I was on one when I wrote the blog last night. Um, if you're somebody who enjoys the times where I'm not very kind on the blog, you're, you're going to like the one this week. I'll link that down in the show notes as I always do. But um, I, I just I typed it into YouTube. I watched a handful of the videos, and they were all terrible. Like, t-t-terrible. And you guys know I have a rule. I won't target individual people who create content. It is a hard thing to do. Uh, putting yourself out there is something that most people would never dream of doing. And no matter how bad the content, uh, I'm almost never going to bash them publicly uh, unless they come after me first, which is yet to happen, but uh, it'll be fun when it does. Anyway, I was looking for some clarity on this and did not get it at all. Uh, wasn't even close, and it was really hard sitting through some of these videos. Uh, sometimes by people who have a lot of subscribers, a lot of followers. But alas, it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. And I left there dumber than when I walked in. And I go into more detail about this on the blog if you want to check that out. 
Uh, but the moral of the story and the moral of the story all the time is if you just want to hear people say that every single tool and concept out there in the Forex world is awesome, and then you're left with 100 concepts sitting in front of you and you have no idea which one to use, well, then there are plenty of channels out there for you. But if you want the truth on these things, you also know where to go. Uh, but when we're talking about currency correlations, when you first heard that term, whenever it was, and you understood that it applied to different currencies correlating to each other. What did you first think when you heard it? I would be willing to bet that it's the same as most people think. They're like, wow, okay, so I have two or more currencies that are all going the same way. Maybe I can use this information to get a jump on where a particular currency is heading in the future. We all want that canary in the coal mine. And for those of you who don't know what that is, some kind of warning signal that says, okay, things are about to go this way. Because who wouldn't love to have that, right? I mean, you would search the ends of the earth for something like that. So, for example, if the pound and the Aussie are correlating, I can watch them both and wait for one of them to move first, and then I can just assume that the other one is bound to follow because they're correlating. They're moving at the same time. So let's start with the obvious answer here. If they're moving at exactly the same time, you're probably not going to get that early entry signal you're looking for. And if you go back and look at any two charts of any two currencies you think are correlating, if you take a step back, it's going to look like they are. But then when you actually start drilling down and looking candle by candle, which is what you want, because that's what you're trading. You're not trading the big picture. We're not Forex investors. We're Forex traders. We want to know what's happening on a candle-by-candle -candle basis. Once you start drilling down that close, you are going to see just how much those pairs really don't correlate that much at all. I gave lots of examples of this in the blog. I do know that this whole podcast does need visuals, and so that's where I put it. Uh, but just remember that even if they look like they are, they're really not far more often than they actually are. And that's a problem. That's a really big problem, actually, because you might catch it when they actually are moving in lockstep with each other. And then the very next time you try to make a trade, it's not going to be that way. And then on top of that, you have two currencies that might be kind of correlating right now that months from now might not correlate at all for an extended period of time. Sometimes currencies will run together for a little bit, and then they won't. Do you know when that change is going to happen? You don't, because nobody does. In the end, you need a lot more information on this than you currently have. And because you don't, this whole concept is completely unusable. And I would wager to say that a lot of times, you're not even watching things actually correlate. All right, stay with me on this. You will often find times where certain currencies out of the eight majors do something called drive the bus, meaning because we always trade one currency against another, there's a good chance that one of those currencies, especially over an extended period of time, is going to be much more important than the other one is in terms of how they control whether that overall pair moves up or down. So in the examples I gave in the blog, that currency was the British pound. For an extended period of time, it just mattered more what was happening with the pound, whether it was strong or weak, than it did the quote currency. And when this happens, you are going to see charts that look very similar. And you're going to think that certain currencies as a result might correlate, but they're totally not. Here's a question for all of you out there. and yell it out if you know it, but this is not an easy question. When it comes to currencies that look like they're really driving the bus, which two out of the major eight are the most easy to spot when this is happening? Out of all of the eight majors, when these two currencies are, quote, driving the bus, which two are the most easy to spot on your charts? What are they? Get to me. Did anybody say the United States dollar? Because you're wrong. The two most easy to spot currencies 
when they are in a position of power to, quote, drive the bus, are the euro and the yen. Now that you know this, can anybody tell me why? The answer is because when you look at how all of the currencies are laid out in terms of which ones we say first and which ones we say last, the euro is always first, the yen is always last. So if the euro is in a position of power, and the events that are happening with them just happen to be more powerful than the other currencies, you're going to run into a situation where many of the euro charts look the same. And on the other, other end, if the same thing is happening with the yen, uh, which actually does happen, believe it or not, most of your yen charts are going to look very similar as well. It's just a matter of one of those two currencies driving the bus more than the other currencies are right now. It doesn't mean things are correlating. If the Euro Aussie and the Euro Kiwi look the same to you, to the naked eye, go look at an Aussie Kiwi chart. <laughs> Chances are it's not flatlining. Chances are it's actually moving one way because if you guys remember from the Aussie Kiwi video, that pair moves a lot. That's why we like it. I don't want people listening to this podcast in the future and then going to their charts and saying, well, the VP doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, look at these charts. A lot of them are moving the same way. These currencies are correlating. No, they are not. Please understand what it is you're actually seeing. Just because they are called currency correlations doesn't mean that's what they are actually doing. I mentioned this in the blog as well. Don't fall in love with the way things are titled. Look deeper, especially in Forex. Don't hear things like currency correlations and just assume that certain currencies run together a lot and there's a way we can take advantage of that. Because you can't. If there was, there would be somebody out there on YouTube or anywhere that actually has real examples of how you can do this over and over and over again. But they don't. Even the best sites that I found the examples that they showed still had a lot of holes in them. Still looked like exactly what we talked about earlier. How uh, to the zoomed out eye, they look like they're running together. But as soon as you look candle by candle, it's a totally different story. Nobody has ever come up with any kind of numbers to prove that this thing works over time. Because there's no way they would ever be able to. On the flip side. There is something that can be tested over time to see if it works backwards and forwards, and that is your trading system. Stop looking for things outside of that. You think it's actually going to be something that can complement your system, and I get that, but it won't. If anything, it's going to sabotage your system because it's going to take you away from something that actually works. I got the question before, too. I said, hey. Uh, on the euro, for example, I am getting a signal to go short on the euro dollar, but every other euro pair is telling me to go long. Should I still go short on the euro dollar? Yes, absolutely. If your system is telling you to do it, do it. Don't ask questions. It has been proven to work. Nothing else out there has. Uh, but traders, if you don't have a system that's been proven to work, you need a system that has been proven to work, and you know where to go to put that together. It's the only channel in existence, it's the only podcast in existence that actually helps you create one that you will have for life. Whether or not you're smart enough to follow it and not deviate from it is totally up to you, but you got to have one first. So catch up on the material and get testing. It is so worth it in the end. Uh, in the meantime, if you haven't yet, go and rate and review the podcast on iTunes. Get ready for another Baseline video coming up on Thursday. Um, everybody seems to be enjoying that, and there's plenty more of that to come. And let us keep this head of steam going. Do not slow down. It's worth it. Go get it.